I was so excited to put a long sleeve shirt on this morning that I put it on and look, it's, it's been on the hanger since last season and it's poofed up right there. My, makes me a little less excited to wear long sleeve shirts. So we're just gonna ignore that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have this whole list of videos that I want to film and you know what? I was like, I just wanna kinda get ready and I don't wanna have to worry about anything being new. I just, let's just get ready. So I thought, well, let's get ready using some of my old favorites. Some of the ones that I used to love so much and still love, but you know, they got in the back of the drawer, new things came out, they seem shinier at the moment, so these kind of got neglected. We're gonna see how awesome they are because I'm gonna use them again, so let's get started. Okay, so I have nothing on my face but skincare and brows, obviously SPF, which I always have the SPF that I am wearing on any given day that I film listed and linked in the description box. But we are gonna start out with the face, and I gotta get rid of these circles, and this is, an old fave, but it, it's one that I have been using currently, and it's the Fit Glow Beauty Corrector in Peach. I'm trying to get through a lot of my correctors, and I used to like mix it up, and every day, every other day, I would use something different, and I've really just been using this for the past two weeks, so that's what I'm gonna use today, and honestly, I'm scraping the sides, so it won't be long before I have to pull another one out. So I just put a tiny bit in the inner corner, and then I'm just gonna tap it out with my ring finger do you see i don't know if y'all can see right here and right there brand new chic dermaplaning tool sliced my face open and it was definitely not the first time i have used one of those but holy cow i was not happy <laughs> but i will tell you side note i immediately put the truth treatments omega healing balm on it and by the next morning, it was significantly better. So I can't recommend that enough. I'll link it down below because it's great for everything, but it's the very first thing I reached for after I did this. Right after I got the bleeding to stop, basically, pressed it in there. That's all I used on it that night, and it worked fabulously. Okay, I rotate through my foundations quite a bit, but this one I have not used in a hot minute and i remember liking it when i first got it this is the merit foundation stick i think there's a better word for it or a actual name i guess i should say this is in the shade sand now i'm not sure if they reformulated this or not because i know they did like a whole new rebrand launch on it recently but i don't know if it was from reformulation or new packaging. Apparently somebody drove up, but I can't see who it is. Okay, I'm gonna take this. This is the It Cosmetics Complexion Perfection Buki Brush, which I have been liking lately for all of my foundations. Stick, liquids, it doesn't matter. I like just, I like the density. I like the size. It blends everything in really quickly. I'm in the color, I don't know if I said sand. I have a little breakout right here, so we're gonna up the coverage on that. Typically with stick foundations, I like to you know, go directly in, but the size of this compared to this, it would take forever. So I'm just striping it on, it's working good. And I'm really just kind of pressing that in with the brush. Who has tried their new bronzer stick? I would love to know what you think. Some people I have seen use it say that it's like almost so natural that it blends away to nothing. And then some people say that they absolutely love it and it's their favorite. I need a cream bronzer, like a hole in the head, but I am curious. So I think that's pretty. Especially if you are someone who only likes to spot conceal for coverage, this is very good for that because it is almost the size of a cream concealer and you can just kind of dot it in blend it out with your finger and be good to go. Stick it in your purse for touch-ups. I can definitely see the love that that product gets. I have not used this in a long while. When it first launched, I feel like I used it probably every day for like three weeks. It was, I think it was in a favorites video. I really do like it, but it's very full coverage on me. This is the Lawless Conceal the Deal full coverage concealer. This is the reformulated version, not the original one. 
and I am in the shade, I cover it up with my labels. I think ballet, I'll link it down below. And I have mentioned before how I just cannot stand this applicator. I think it's trying to be a doe foot, but it's kind of like a paddle slash doe foot. A ton of product comes out on it. It's just not my favorite, but the actual concealer is really good, especially if you need a full coverage concealer. I had someone comment on one of my videos last week or the week before asking what my favorite full coverage concealer is because they typically don't go for full coverage. I prefer medium coverage. That's my favorite. But this is what I mentioned because it to me and according to the label is full coverage, but it still wears really nicely. It's not super cakey. Now, I mean, be mindful of how much you put on because it's full covered. You don't need a lot. If you go in there and do the whole huge triangle and all that kind of stuff, then yes, it's going to get cakey, but you just don't need that much. I am going to use a cream blush today. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before we let all of the cream products sink in. And this is one that I love and for some reason rarely reach for. And it's from Westman Atelier and it's in the shade Mimi. And I think I got this in a set, but hopefully they sell this by itself now individually, but it's just this gorgeous neutral pinky brown shade that honestly will go with any eye look, any lip color. It's just pretty. Why I don't pull this out more, I have no idea, but that's why I like doing these kind of videos because it forces me to use products that I know are fabulous that I just haven't reached for in a while. All right, let's go on to the eyes. Y'all, this used to be in my favorite palettes video at least two or three times running. It's the Persona Cosmetics Identity Palette. I have loved this since it first launched with different packaging. This is a newer one that they sent over, but I have two other ones that are well loved in the older cardboard packaging. This is plastic. And to me, if you are a minimalist with eyeshadow palettes, you don't like the ones that have like 36 colors because they really overwhelm you. You don't know where to start, but you want a mixture of matte and shimmer. I recommend this one because it does have equal amounts of matte and shimmer. It's got six each and it really has everything you need. Now, the only thing I don't love about this is that I do have to mix two colors to get my perfect transition color, but that's like really pushing it as far as critique goes. So I'm gonna mix Humble and Charming, these two right here on a crease brush, just to make Charming a little bit lighter of a brown. And I'm going to carve out my crease with that. This is a great formula. This was, I believe, the first product that Persona Cosmetics brought out. And oh, it is just so good. They have an Identity 2 palette as well, which is also great. But if I had to choose, I would go with the original because it just is everything you need. This is a Refer 15 brush. And then I'm gonna take the Persona Eye Brush, or I think they may call this a multi brush. And I'm gonna go into Audacious, which is another matte shade down here. Very appropriate for fall because it's that real pretty terracotta shade. And I'm gonna put this all over the lid. Just press it in. You can see this, these do not lack for pigment. And I have not gone back into the palette. I'm just continuing to use what's on the brush to get this opacity, which is pretty impressive. Because I love a little bit of shimmer, I'm gonna go into Gold Digger right here, which is a really pretty gold. And this is a Sigma E25 brush. And I'm gonna press that on top of that maroon color. So you still have that backdrop of that matte shade, but it's bringing a little bit of lightness to the look. Now to set down the face, I pulled out my Lancome Long Time No Shine Mattifying Powder in Translucent. I was asked in another comment, I believe on my Lancome Taunty Doll 
foundation video, whether or not I prefer this one or the Absolute powders. If I had to choose just one, I would probably choose the Absolute. They're not as easily available or readily available as this is, but I can't say a blanket statement that Absolute works best all the time because if I have a more like luminous foundation and then I put that Absolute on top, it's a little too much because it does have a little bit of a sheen. So this one, as you can tell, really easily mattifies the face, but it's not flat and it doesn't stay this matte all day. It kind of transforms to more of a semi-matte, natural matte finish an hour or so after it's applied. Once it mixes with the foundation underneath. I actually really enjoy that powder. I don't use it enough. I feel like I tend to gravitate more towards pressed powders because they're just easier. They're not as messy. But as far as loose powders go, I do enjoy that one. I had to bring out my Bobbi Brown bronzers because if anyone knows how to do bronzer, especially matte bronzer, it is Bobbi Brown. This is in Stone Street. I also have natural, but Stone Street is the one that I typically grab, but I haven't used it in a while. Even though I'm about to hit pan, just shows how much I have used it in the past, but it's so good, y'all. It is. I mean, they just know what they're doing when they formulate their bronzers. And they've been a favorite of many for so long for a reason. And again, a lot of times I tend to go for bronzers that have a little bit of a sheen to them, like a baked gelée or just one of the hourglass ones, like the luminous bronze light is a favorite. But there's something to be said about a good matte bronzer. And I feel like everybody should have one in their collection. Even if you're a minimalist, have one with a sheen, have one that's matte, you're good to go. I still feel like you can see that blush. So I'm not going to add any more. And to keep with the Westman Atelier theme, I pulled out the lit up highlighting stick in Nectar. This is a very wet looking highlight. It is also pretty tacky. I will go ahead and say that. Out of all of my cream stick highlights, this is probably the tackiest, but look at how pretty that is. I don't personally have an issue with tacky things because, I mean, I'm not touching my face. My hair doesn't typically get stuck in it, but I feel like I need to mention it because I know some people don't like that but the effect it gives on the skin is so pretty. I'm gonna go in with that same audacious color and use that under the lash line. And then to brighten up that inner corner a little bit, I'm gonna go into Sassy, which is this shade right here. It is a very high sheen color and I love or loved, I remember keeping this out on my vanity, especially when I first got it. And I would use this no matter what palette I was using, I would use this as my inner corner highlight because it is so high sheen. So I'm just bringing it up just a little bit, just to brighten that inner corner. Because when you're working with these kind of colors, sometimes, especially for a smokier eye like this, sometimes it can make you look a little tired. So I feel like if you really emphasize brightening the inner corner and then bringing it up on the lid some, it helps from having that tired effect. Now I'm going to do mascara off camera. Nothing. I mean, it's an old fave, but it's something I'm currently using and it's my Chantecaille. So I'll be back to finish off with lips. So for lips, I pulled out one of my old favorites from Mac that I have not used in a hot minute. This is actually a newer, tube of lipstick from them. I have gone through a couple of these. This is Honey Love. Surprise, surprise, it's nude. Actually, I know y'all aren't surprised that it's nude, but it's a little different than my nude lipsticks otherwise because it has more of a warmer undertone to it. It is also a matte lipstick. Let me see if I can see, because my label is covering it up, what formula this is. It's matte. <laughs> so, 
I always top this with a gloss because I prefer a shinier finish and I don't want anything with color. So I'm just going to use my Merit. This is actually the tinted lip oil, but this is in Bel Air. So it really doesn't have a tint. It's more clear, but you can see it gives the prettiest sheen. Now a tip when using clear lip oils or glosses, your lipstick will get on the doe foot. So I just like to take a clean tissue and wipe off all of that color before I put it back in to the product. Because if I don't do that, the color of all the lipsticks that I have used before this will start to turn the actual oil. And I don't want that. I want this to continue to be a clear lip oil. So that's it for the makeup. Let's talk about perfume real quick. I had to take out one of my very first loves when it comes to perfume. And I have not filmed, I think my top five perfumes will go up before this video does, but I have not filmed it yet. And while this was in the running for a very long time, I'm not sure if it is still, but I still absolutely adore it. It is from Mancera and it is Choco Violet. I have a whole Mancera collection video that I will put up in a card if you haven't seen it from a little over a year ago, but this is a hazelnut, orange, chocolate, vanilla fragrance. And it is so good. If you like a nutty chocolate scent, now it does have violet in the notes, hence the name. But what I feel like the violet does is add more of like a powdery undertone than an actual floral undertone. There are definitely more chocolate floral scents that I have smelled than this is. This is more of a smooth, powdery, chocolate hazelnut scent. And oh my goodness, it is so good. It is so good. I cannot recommend this enough. And I just, again, it's the same with makeup. Like I get new perfumes and things get put to the back of my collection. But this is one, I do sell my perfumes. Um, I have a blog link down below. I do rotate through them a lot. If I don't give them love, I will often sell them. But this is one that I don't care if I don't touch it for a year, it will not be out of my collection because it is so good. And now that I have sprayed it on again and I haven't for a while, I remember why I love it so much and we'll continue using it a lot in the coming weeks. So Mancera Choco Violet. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will have everything I used per usual listed and linked down in the description box below. And hopefully this inspired y'all to get out some of your old favorites as well and show them some love. So thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.